Welcome to another edition of Walking This Way's Impact Voice Podcast. Today is Wednesday, September the 7th, 2022. I'm your boy, I'm the host of Walking This Way's Impact Voice, Furman Jackson Jr. Broadcast once again here in Dallas, Fort Worth. We thank everybody for tuning in. We are live tonight with my favorite people I've been knowing since 2012. Jay and Kemmer, I reached out to them to be here on tonight. They're glad to accept the invitation. We're going to be talking about marriage. They have been married since 2012. I mean, 2011. They've been married since 2011. Mm-hmm. They're still going strong. And, and you know, ask them, what keeps a marriage going successful? We know in 2022, we see a lot of people, especially single people, scared to get married. Um, got movements telling men not to get married. Mm-hmm. You know, they're telling all types of uh, false allegations, you name it, to keep people from being married. But this cover has proven that marriage can work. And it takes two willing people, like the Bible said, how can two walk together and accept they agree? It takes two willing people to make a marriage work. And these are prime examples tonight. So I thank you for being here with me tonight here on the podcast. We are live streaming as well here on Facebook Live. So we ask you to like, share, comment. Right. Get the hearts up, get the thumbs up. Do share because tonight, Something would be said that would spark something in you, that would light something in you, that marriage, a good marriage can exist. So I want this favorite couple to introduce themselves as we are live streaming tonight. Go ahead, Jay, Kim, and introduce ourselves to the Walking This Way Impact audience. Absolutely. Well, we are Jay and Kimma. So first, I want to thank you for having us come on. This is an honor. Anytime anyone ever asks us to speak and share we take it seriously. So real quick, what I'm going to do while we're introducing ourselves, so I'm going to get my dog outside because he's a little excited. And <laughs> go ahead. If he, if we are not paying attention to our dogs, he will like howl at us. So we should have had that already done, but he was being good until we started talking. So that is my husband, Jay, as you heard, Jonathan, he goes by Jay. I don't even know how you came about the, the, the name Jay, but it just sticks. It's just the letter J because people spell it and they say J-A-Y. We're like, no, it's just J. <laughs> and I'm Kimma uh, Keevil, and we are so honored, Herman, for you to, like my husband said, for you to have asked us because we have watched you, man of God, grow for the past 10 years. And then when you relocated to, you're in Dallas, right? Yeah, I'm in Dallas. When, we, when you went there, that was like amazing. And I remember they had that like little party for you or mm-hmm. like a going away thing. We wanted to be there so bad, but we just sent our blessings down there to you. But we're just so extremely proud of you. We and are so proud. That. And I appreciate you and I love y'all. Y'all are truly dear friends of mine. I know y'all got a lot going on, um, ministry wise, business wise. I know Jay had already has a book out, and the name of tonight's show is after the book A Reason to Live. And we want to talk, give people a reason to live. So if you're watching us right now on Facebook Live, hashtag a reason to live. And we're gonna do something very interesting too. When you put a reason to live. Put that number one reason why is a reason to live. We want to read your comments tonight yes. on that. So hashtag a reason to live. So we ask you like, share, comment, get the thumbs up, get the hearts up as well. Smash the heart button. Smash <laughs> the heart button. And like, so we're talking about marriage um, tonight. We're talking about marriage. We're talking about faith. We're talking about some very important stuff when it comes to marriage. And with y'all marriage and y'all union, how did it all come about and how did this unique union came all together? Well, it's a very unique story and something that we love to share because people are very fascinated by it. But we met at an Alcoholics Anonymous, AA Hog Roast, and I was just there um, at a very like sad place in my life. I had been through my second divorce, just coming out of like addiction and I had a little bit of time clean, but still really kind of lonely and lost. And they had asked me to do some photography for the for the event. And I remember I saw him sitting at a table with um, a bunch of guys from rehab. Now, if you know the AA laws or rules, you're not supposed to talk to anybody in rehab. right? That's just like an AA thing. It's not a God thing, but it's an AA thing, right? And But I was super drawn to him. And that's all I can say. It's the only thing that I can explain. And um, I took some pictures of all of them at the table and everything. And um, at the very end of the meeting, I saw him, and this is, this will explain his servant's heart. Everybody rushed out of the meeting to smoke because everybody in AA mainly smoked cigarettes, right? And I noticed that he didn't rush out to smoke. He was cleaning the tables. And I remember thinking like, that's really odd. He must not smoke. 
you know, because he's cleaning the tables. But then I saw him after he was done cleaning the tables, he went out to smoke. And I was like, okay, he does smoke, but he stopped to clean first. And it just, I don't know why that spoke to me. Like that just really like, it, it would impress me because everybody just flew out the door and left their mess behind, but he didn't. And he like cleaned. And so I remember I wrote my name and number on a, on a little napkin, which he still has. And I said, when you're out of rehab, call me. And he never called me for a really long time. And I thought, oh, I felt so silly. Like I missed that one. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? That was ridiculous. But he really did wait until it was clear rule wise to talk to me. And so that was another thing that kind of impressed me that because they had a pay phone there, he could have, you know, broke the rules and called, but he didn't. And he waited until he was actually in a halfway house to, um, to call me. So do you remember that night, don't you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I, I didn't see what she saw in me at first either. Cause I was just like, dude, I'm, I'm in a rehab. I got nothing. I didn't have this story where I, I gained a bunch of stuff and addiction took it away. I started young. So like, I never had anything really to lose except for a bunch of trust, you know, and, and hurt mm. a bunch of people, but I didn't have like a house and a car and all this stuff. Like I was, I started pretty young. So I was like, what does she see in me? Like, I didn't get it at first. Like, here I am. I'm out of rehab. I'm in a halfway house. I got no I got some clothes. I got no car, no phone, no, no job. job, no nothing. So at first it was just kind of like, all right, well, you know, this is cool. So we started going to AA meetings in church together and we started kind of, you know, going on our dates like that, which I consider our dates because we, that's all we could, that's we were all we were allowed to do. That's all we were allowed to do. Because he had rules at his halfway house too. And so that kind of kept structure around us, which was good. Probably good for us. It was yeah. very good. He had to be in at a certain time and, you know, he had to have permission to leave and, we were a little aggravated with that at first, but we thought this is not a forever thing, you know, do things the correct way. Right. And um, I remember when I really realized I fell in love with him was at church and he had a Bible, which I was like impressed with because he didn't have much, he didn't have much, you know, and a lot of my friends all spoke really negative. You know, he's young, he doesn't have anything, he has nothing to bring to the table. And I kept seeing this thing, I guess I, ooh, it makes me cry. I kept seeing who he could be like who he was going to be. Like, I didn't see him for what he was. That's all, that's all I can explain it. But um, anyway, we just kept on, you know, doing what, what was the next right thing. And then eventually he was able to get, you know, he landed a job and then we were able to, you know, set, you remember you got that little apartment yeah. and then we just got married. We were just like, we are not going to mess around and like live together. Or we wanted to do everything completely correct. And, um, and again, people talked, you know, like, it's your third marriage. Why don't you just see, you know, and then to him, you can imagine the things they said to him. She's older than you. And, you know, just, it was a bunch of really negative things. But what we did with all of those words was we used those to motivate us to prove people wrong. You know what I mean? And we did, we have had a lot of bumps in the road. We have, but what we did is we never gave up and we just kept fighting for what we knew that God had for us, you know, cause we know the devil's going to come with all kind of stuff, you know, and bumps in the road. But, you know, after we've celebrated 10 years this past November, yeah, so it'll be 11 this year, it'll be 11 this year. And, um, we just, man, it just was like putting one day on top of the other, you know, just stacking, stacking things on top of each other, you know, and then we were, we, 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 um, really struggled at the beginning for a lot of years financially. We were really um, right. We were called, we call it bill, bill paid broke where we would pay our bills, but we were broke. But we, I just heard you talk to somebody the other day about this. He said, we didn't have a lot of things. We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have a lot of like possessions, but we loved each other. So we were always very happy. Hmm. But if an emergency came, we were not happy. Right. Because like we, we had to hustle and try to borrow money or, you know, whatever we had to do. And that part of it wasn't great. But for all those years, not having money, we still had each other and we still had like the very basics of life and we were okay with that. And I think God kind of watched that, to see how we were going to be with the little things. Right. And then he has started just recently in the last year to really trust us with more things. Right. And I think what really kept our marriage strong too with all that is, so first I'll show you this. So the, the napkin, I still have. I didn't know he was going to do this, guys. I still have the napkin. It's taped right there in my Bible. Yeah, that's true. That's I the number it. on the napkin. I also, that. yeah. So I still have that. Um, but I think that was that's part of our story that has made us strong too. Because was everything perfect? Did we have some struggles and bumps in the road? Absolutely. But 
we both kind of came out of pretty crazy backgrounds, you know, which God has freed us from. So with that, we were like, we were not jack of all trades, master of no, we were jack of like a couple things and master of nothing. So mm-hmm. like, as we were together, we were always like hustling and grinding together to, to make ends meet. So we were learning new skills, new things to do, new, we were just always working together. Mm-hmm. And we've always been so close together that like, usually you hear a lot of other couples, they're like, oh, I'm going out with the boys or I'm going out with the girls and to get it's away like, with, you know, get away from my husband or what. We never have felt that we've way. We've never, we've never really done that. And if that's what, you know, people do, that's what people do. That's, that's cool. But for us, we just never really did that. Like we are always like, we were always together where we were like, you know, even in the midst of it, we've always been best friends, you know? So we've always been so close and literally do everything together. I mean, we work together, we, we learn together, we grow together. We've done so many things together that I think it's just, it's been a, a process of, learning each other, learning what we're good at, learning what our purpose is, learning what we're supposed to do, you know, with our faith. And just, it's, it's really strengthened us to get us to the point we are today. And the struggle is what makes the end of the story so much greater. Yeah. It's not even close to the end. Yeah, right? yeah. But the struggle, Do you remember at the Wings of Life, um, you know about the Wings of Life, Herman, um, yeah. they called us Timothy. <laughs> Oh, really? Kim and Jonathan put together uh-huh. because they saw us such as a, like a one person. So they would say, Kimothan. Like, hmm. Is Kimothan coming? And it would be me, me and him together. I thought that was so cute. But I, I remember what I was saying a second ago about when I fell in love with him was at church and he had his Bible and uh, the pastor was going back and forth in the pulpit and he was up on the edge of his seat and he was like writing and watching. Right. And I was watching him and I was like, Hmm, that's, that's, that's really interesting. Then uh, we were worshiping and I just happened to open my eyes during worship and I looked over him at him and he has these long arms, man. Like his arms are like <laughs> six feet long. Like he's got the, look at how long his arms are, but he had these <laughs> long arms stretched up to God and he had like, he was worshiping God and he was just singing to God. And I remember like my heart was just captured. There was, there was no other thing that I could even explain. Like I was like, and I always prayed to God that I wanted somebody that loved God more than me. And that's like a deep prayer to pray, right? Because you know, if they love God more than you, then they're always going to put God before you. And some women or some men don't like that. They want to be first, right? But I just knew if I prayed for somebody that loved God more than me, I would always be safe, right? I would always be safe. And that is like what the moment that I really knew that I loved him. And that was pretty early on. It was, it was probably just a couple of weeks into us dating, but I was like, Oh my gosh, I love this person, you know? <laughs> and even, like I said, with everybody saying no, you know, we, we had very few fans. I think your mom was like one of the few because his mom was like, even though I was older than him, she was so happy that he was with somebody that was keeping him on the right path right, in church right. in AA because she had seen him with, a, with women or girls that just were wrecked, you know, and mm-hmm. they would cause him to, act crazy so he she was like I don't care how old you are my son seems happy and he's clean and we're gonna be okay with this but I think she was probably one of the rare yeah. r- my daughter my daughter actually Noelle she was good with it too because she saw how happy I was but yeah. uh, the other people guys mm-hmm. we just had to like prove everybody wrong right we just had hey, to- that with the age I know people come with their own theories about the age difference and stuff like that how you know what would they say? Like, what would, okay, Kim, what would they say? Cause I know what a younger guy, older one, they'll probably say, or he'll probably meet somebody younger and uh-huh. he'll leave you for this uh-huh. younger person. No, and- every day. Every day. Cause you know, we have a lot of reels on Facebook that are really big and viral right now. So yeah. sometimes we have to take a deep breath because we have one particular reel that's like 18 point something million views, right? Wow. And so with that is like six or 7,000 comments. And in those comments, there's thousands of people that are saying negative things like, oh, let's keep an eye on them. He'll be cheating with some young girl in a year or she's going to get old and be in a wheelchair in five years or, you know, this like just just these things like constantly. And some days I have to like stop reading because as as much as we want to think we're thick skinned and we don't let things bother us. I'm a very sensitive person, I'm wired sensitive. So it, it does bother me sometimes, but then I just sit back and I have to think like, they're like, their negative comments still push our analytics until still make us money, you know, cause we get paid on views, right? 
Right. So if they're viewing <laughs> and it's 18 million views and we're, we're racking bank, you know what I mean? So we're just like, let the hate motivate us. So, it, so really it does motivate us. He really hasn't had too much negative in his ear, but it's more in my ear that he's going to leave me. But I mean, <laughs> we're, we're going on 11 years, you know what I mean? So. And, and, and it's the thing about it is y'all made it work and how y'all came together, y'all still made it work. In spite mm -hmm. of all what people may say or think, y'all still made it. Because you know what? This is y'all life. This is something y'all both want. This is something y'all really cherish. And I respect that. Anybody should respect that when it comes to love, the respect, the caring, the all that stuff that people look for. People look for that acceptance, but seeing that they can't really find it. It's like, what are they doing wrong? Because like you get a negative when it comes to marriage. Mm -hmm. You hear people, oh, he like all men cheat and all right. men do this. And okay, yep. from you being a married man, Jay, how do you handle that when you hear guys and say or hear females say all men cheat? You know what I'm saying? All men are not faithful when it comes to marriage. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and I haven't heard anything like that in a while because, you know, I mean, we work from home now. So we, we do our own thing. I shut it down. But I mean, hearing stuff like that, because I used to work in the shipyards and the fabrication industry and stuff. So, I mean, I used to hear a lot of, you know, people say goofy <laughs> stuff too. But the way I look at it is like, if you do what the world always does, you're going to get what the world always gets. And I just always look at it like we put God first in everything. So what he says is all that matters. And anybody else that says anything, it's just like, well, it doesn't really matter what you think because God is leading me and leading us and everything. So I know everything's gonna be okay. Right. So second, it's just like with, with how I was before, before God, I did, I had a bad picker. I would pick, I would pick <laughs> women that were just as unhealthy as I was. It wasn't that they were unhealthy. It's, it's that they were in the same place I was like, right. So when God really paired us together, cause I believe he really did pair us together cause it just, it flowed together so nicely I believe just God put it all in place. So putting him first allowed it to kind of, he like rolled the carpet out for us. Yeah. You know? So it all came from putting him first. But if I didn't go to him, I don't know where I'd be. If I didn't meet her, I don't even know if I'd still be sober. Cause I feel like God knew exactly what I needed. Mm. Yeah. I was the type of person who was like, I was super depressed, lonely, angry. I don't even know where I'd be. So. Yeah. Remember you said that to me the other yeah. day, it was so emotional. He was like, I really don't, no, if I'd even be sober, if it wasn't for you. And I was like, Oh, babe, really? And he was like, I'm serious. Like my, I chose such unhealthy people that I might be like, you know, in a really bad place. But I want to tell you something real quick too, Sherman. That's funny. Go ahead. When we first met that first part of our story. I didn't know how old he was and he didn't know how old I was. Right. It was something because we had like these quick AA interactions. Like okay. think about it. When we, when I pick him up, from his the halfway house we go to we he had permission to go to an AA meeting or permission to go to church so yeah. we would listen to music we'd go we'd do mm -hmm. it and he'd have to go back well age just never came up I guess because he looked like he was mid thirties and I guess I looked mid thirties so we mm -hmm. never really like never thought to ask. we never thought to ask so we're driving one day this is a funny story we're driving in a snowstorm right real slippery and I he was in the back seat I picked up a girl that I was sponsoring AA she was in the passenger side. And I have some like 70s music on. I can't even remember what it was. Do you remember what it was? No, I didn't even know what yeah. it was. So I'm singing to it and the girl's singing to it. And I look, catch him in my rear view mirror and he's looking out the window all bored. And I was like, you don't like this song? And he was like, like this song. This song's way before my time. And I was like, what? Because <laughs> I didn't know, right? And I was like, what do you mean? Because it was like a song when I was young, you know? And he goes, I wasn't even born, I don't think, when this song was out. And dude, I was like, well, hold up, how old are you? And he was like, I'm 22. And I was like, I literally, like, fishtailed. Like, if you know what that means, like, your car's, like, uh -huh. when I hit the brakes and I was like, you know what I mean? It literally, like, put me in a little bit of a shock because I was like, oh, my gosh, what? And he's like, why? How old are you? And I was like, I'm 44. And we're, he was like, what? I mean, so we were like, we were like, really, like freaking out a little bit right yeah, we had no idea so i literally the whole aa meeting felt like i can't you know this is not right i can't do this it's never gonna work and i went to my spiritual mom about it the next day and i was like linda i found out something about that jonathan that he's and she was like kimma what what is what is the issue and i was like he's so much younger and she said and this is what she said that really like got me um she said when god looks down on the earth he looks at spiritual 
um, spiritual condition, like spiritual right. growth, spiritual right. um, age. Oh yeah, right. And he said, he, she said, and she see, he see, when he come, looks down, he doesn't say like 34, 22. That's man, man does that. Oh yeah, yeah, true. And so, but I still, still after that, I was still like a little freaky about it. And then he just was relentless. Like I told him like, we're just going to be friends. <laughs> and he was like, mm -mm, like I, you're going to be my wife. And so mm -hmm. I, it was like, it was, it was undeniable, right? Like we couldn't deny it as much as I tried. We were just meant to be. And so we do get a lot of slack with that too. You know, like people love to like come against us with all that. And we're just like, we, we are what we are. We love each other. We're legal. We're, you know, changing lives and trying to change each other's life every day. And, but that is just such a funny story because a lot of people say to me, like, why did you even talk to him knowing he was so young? And I, I did it. I didn't know until like we were many weeks into it and I like already loved him. You know what I mean? So mm. anyways, that's just a funny story that we like to tell people because we get that question. Like, what were you guys thinking when you met? We did. We weren't, we didn't, we never said, we never like talked about the age thing. You know, one thing we did talk about though, that was very important was children. I right. did say to him um, at one point, I said, look, we need to talk because I can't have any more kids. Um, you know, I'm past that point in my life. And he was so funny, Herman. He was like, oh my gosh, I never thought I'd find a woman that didn't want to have kids. And I was like, why? And he goes, I don't want kids. And oh. I was like, you don't want kids. And he was like, I know that sounds awful, but I just thought no woman I ever going to meet is going to not want children. And I was like, well, it's not that I don't want children. It's just not in the, right. in the cards for us. So we have a beautiful granddaughter. My daughter from my first marriage has a grand, uh, has a daughter and two, two babies now, actually a two year old and a six month old. And they both call him Papa. So okay. he's like the youngest grandpa in life. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but we have that and we have our dogs, like our dog is our, is our, our dogs are our children. And we have a very simple life where if we want to leave for the day, we give them all food and we're like, we'll be back later. You know, where you can't do that with a kid. You know what I mean? Right. So that's just kind of like a little detail of our life that some people just, you know, want to say like, she'll never be able to give him kids, but that's not something that he desires. Right. You know what I mean? So, so that's a really good thing to know. It, it is because when you, because I, I did an older one before too, and she, I did an older one before, and when you don't have kids, it's like the older woman really in her mind thinks, okay, this young man wants to have children, I'm not going to be able to do that. Right. And that's where we're, we end up going our separate ways, and she didn't want to hold me back from that. Right. Um, but Jay, that's, you no, know, he didn't want to have any kids, so it worked out. Um, right. it, worked point, it worked out. So the main thing is y'all are together and there's something that y'all wanted. Cause a lot of people need to hear that. Not basing stuff off other people opinions, you know, looking for other people's selfish. But y'all walk to the beat of your own drums. Like, I don't care what nobody thinks. I want to be here. Right. Um, and it's not like I have to be here. I want to be here. And that's a beautiful story that y'all have that people need to hear that. And don't worry about what people think or say, because people don't talk but talk good about you, whether you're doing good or bad. It doesn't regardless. matter. It doesn't matter. Um, doesn't. But but what keys can y'all give to people that wants to be married, that wants that wants to have that significant other that they want to settle down with, create a life with for the rest of their life? So what keys can y'all give us to the single people that yeah. wants to get I, married or those who are married? Right, right. right. What, what think, fire can you light under their bellies to get right. their marriage going in the right direction? Because we know it takes work in marriage. Yeah. I think for people that aren't married yet, that do that talk that we had at the very beginning and get, yeah, okay. all, get all those serious things on the table. Because what you don't want is you don't want there to be some hidden thing that you didn't say about yourself or, you know, come to terms with. And then five years from now say, well, oh my gosh, I wanted kids. And you didn't tell me you didn't want kids like, or like things in your past, your baggage that might come up, always put everything out. And then like with, with me, I had a lot of baggage and I told him everything. Cause I wanted him to be able to make a educated decision. If he wanted to mm. step forward with me, I didn't want him to have to find out from at a year, 10 years, 20 years and go, why didn't you tell me that? So I told him everything. And at one point he's like, why are you telling me all this? I said, because you have the right to look at all this on the table and say, I want to try to deal with that or I don't. And I would respect him either way. He did the same thing with me. 
he told me all the things he had, you know, all the different, you know, dreams or struggles. And it was really important for that table that day to be just with all of our stuff there for us, each other to see. Now, afterwards, I would always say like our main thing that we have is we try, I, I think we've never gone to bat, bed mad. I think that's one of the things that we, yeah. we've never, we even, you know, and we don't have that many arguments. We bicker sometimes occasionally, but I had somebody say to me recently, like, don't tell me that you and Jay never argue. I never see you guys argue. And we're like, we don't, we don't really, sometimes we might disagree, but it's like, it, it's, we work through it very quickly. We don't ever let time sit on an issue because that's when things kind of grow and fester and your mind can get, you know what I mean? But yeah. that's like a really important component. And the other really, really important component is people talk about like, you know, um, the sexual part of things. And I always say this, he is so wonderfully good to me in every way that it makes me want to be submissive in every way back. But like with the man has to start that, right? And, I, and I'm sure there'll be some people like, that's, I don't agree with that. But when he, he treats me so good that I can't help it not want to be good back to him right. and so vice versa so we just do that we're just like extra like whatever you need and he's whatever i need and it just works out in such a beautiful way you know that we never have like those type of issues even 10 years into our marriage we still act and feel like we just met you know because you know a lot of people get like you know go to bed and turn over and we oh, just yeah are not like that you know and maybe the it, it, like the, the worst argument you could ever think of you would just say well just step back for a minute and take a breath right in, instead of just like responding yeah so, we might walk away that's like the the mm -hmm. farthest anything's ever gone is like okay we're just gonna go like sit out be alone for a minute and think because when you're in the heat of the moment you, you say you could say some really stupid stuff mm -hmm. really really quickly and then right. you can't take those words back i mean you can try but it's always going to be in the person's mind yeah. so Sometimes it's just like cool down and then, you know, emotions high or worst time to make any sort of statements or accusation or whatever's, you know, going through your mind. So just take a breather, step back, and then be sure to come back before the night's over. Because the worst thing you want to do is go to bed like that because you let stuff fester and you, you know what the enemy wants to do. He oh, wants yeah. to take that stuff and just twist it and then, you know, just exaggerate it. And then all of a sudden you've got like a whole new argument over something that happened 20 years ago. Right. You, you know, it's just, it's just crazy. So communication is super key. Yeah. I learned yeah. something. I learned something years ago about marriage that said the number one thing that a man wants, and a lot of people think it's a sex thing, right? But it's not. A man really wants to be honored and feel mm. needed and respected. That's number one, right? Say and then again, two, Say that again. To be, honored, <laughs> to be honored and needed and respected and valued. That's their number one desire. And then sex comes underneath it, right? Mm -hmm. Women, we want to feel taken care of mm -hmm. and secure. Right. That we don't worry about things. And then sex comes underneath here. So a lot of people put sex way up here. And it's, it's not right. up there. It's not. If you learn how to give your man, your husband, honor. Like I tell him probably daily. Like, baby, I don't know where I would be without you. I would mm. be lost. You may, we, and I'll say to him a lot, I'll say, we have the most beautiful life. Thank you for giving me a beautiful life. Thank you for making me feel like safe and protected. And then he'll say things to me like, I am so glad that you make me feel like there's nobody like me. Wow. Cause there's nobody in the world that could ever take his place. So back and forth. Yeah. It's I mean, a back and forth thing that we do. I can't, wow. I can't go like wanting to feel like a king if I don't treat her like a queen. Mm. And that's a big problem. Like, you know, trying right. to, in the king aspect, but not treating her like the queen. Well, it ain't ever going to work. That's right. And you know, and it, what the Bible say that our prayers would be hindered. If you mistreat, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I know it talks about if you mistreat your wife, you, your prayers could be hindered as right, well. Right. So, fellas, listen to this. If you're married, you mistreat your wife, and you call yourself a God fearing person, you mistreat your wife, your prayer would not be answered. You have to treat your wife. You have to love your wife like Christ loved the church. And I'm glad you brought that up, Kim. A lot of people need to hear that. It's about the love and respect for the men. And I also want to ask you too, um, Jay, I know you didn't want any kids. I know Kim has kids. And stepping into that role of fatherhood, like I said before, to have this type of movement going on for men to stay away from single mothers. You don't want to be a stepfather. She's just going to use you as another bill. 
How mm-hmm. did you handle that concept of being a stepfather? Because I know he can come on and you step in. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she she was. I mean, she was grown, you know, because we got that age difference. So she was already grown, doing her own thing. So it wasn't like she was younger and she was in the house and it brought that. Because, you know, I can, I can imagine that would be difficult, you know, blended families and, and, and just taking on that role and everything that comes along with that. So, I mean, I don't think I would be able to speak too much into that because I didn't really have to do any of that at all. I mean, I really didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one thing I would say is just like all things to work out, it's – put God first in it, you know, and you're going to have trouble times. You're going to have struggles. You're going to have situations that are not comfortable. You're going to have things that you're like, why did this ever happen? But, you know, with God first in it, he's going to lead you through it. Mm -hmm. But that's why it's so important to start off with everything on the table before being in the middle of it and all of a sudden being like, I didn't even want kids, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted kids, you know, like we just, I just was very, at, you know, just told him, like, I want you to think about this 10 mm. years from now, 20 years from now, are you going to go back and reflect and say, and he, he was always very like adamant about it, but I still even have friends that say today, like, oh, just wait about five years, mm, wait about 10 years. He's going to be sorry. And it's, I have to let those words bounce off of me because if they root in me at all, it will cause that doubt. Right. And that will right. cause friction between us. So him and I always are in communication. Like we'll see a baby and I'll say to him, like, don't you want one? And he'll be like, no. <laughs> so, so like we kind of joke about it, but like about putting the God, God first, I'll tell you another cool thing. And I love to tell stories, right? But recently when we started our business, we were real busy in the mornings, right? And he was doing this TikTok Bible study every day from like nine to 11. And so it started to like, because we had so much to do at that time. And I said to him, I was like kind of gripey. With, and I said, babe, hey, you're going to have to change the time or maybe do it once a week or twice a week, but every day. And I was really in error right there. Right. And so he was so sweet. He was like, okay, we won't, we won't do it today. And so I was like, okay, good. So we tried to work and the, the oh my gosh, this feeling of like, I can't even explain it. It has to be the grieving of the Holy Spirit. That's the only thing that I could think because I felt like I couldn't even breathe. Like it was so bad. And I, I looked at him. I was like, baby, I'm so sorry. Like that was the wrong thing. He goes, I knew you would feel that. <laughs> so mm-hmm. we never did that again. He continued every day from nine to 11, go live on TikTok, bring the word of God, talk to people that were struggling or lost or whatever. And our business has exploded without those two hours of work every day. Like, so it's very supernatural. We don't, I do a little bit of work during that time, but he does nothing. He's doing the work of, of the of God. Mm-hmm. And it is, it has, a, it has helped our business because I believe God was like, okay, they, they're putting me first. Mm-hmm. Even in the busiest time of the day, we just had to do what God wanted. And the coolest thing, Furman, about what's happening on the TikTok Bible study with him is, we have a very like non-judgmental, non-finger pointing way and belief. We, I, I don't like that. I don't like right. at, at, at ministers, at big ministries, at little, we don't, I don't, we don't like it. We don't like mm-hmm. coming against like different uh, communities or different ways of life. We believe that love is going to saturate everything. And that's just our belief. Right. Well, people come on to his Bible study and they're so used to Christians being that way. Yeah, they are. They'll sit there and they'll say to Jay, like, you know, you're the only Christian I listen to. Like, these are non-believers. So this is people that we're like so ecstatic that they are coming to Jay's channel, but they won't go to other ones because you hear you're going to hell, you're a sinner, you're blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Jay just wants to really like be loved to people and the love of God will bring people to repentance. Oh yeah, most definitely. That's it. So when you come with this, you know, that put the finger pointing, Mm -hmm it doesn't work, you know? So it's been a beautiful thing to get these messages or to get these text messages or people in his inbox saying, like, I want to tell you that I was going to, you know, remember the one thing you can tell him about with the guy that was going to kill himself. Oh yeah. Mm. That's right. yeah. Like the, with the book. But anyways, I'll let you talk. Wow. <laughs> um, before you get started, I'm going to read some comments too. Yeah. Um, Lisa said, hello to two of my favorite individuals. Also, Lisa said, God bless you. I wish you all the Lord's blessings. Leslie said, so proud of you, Jay. Um, Leslie said, he would not cheat. I've known him since he was a young teen. He 
he had a sweetheart. He had a sweetheart. So kind. Aww. Uh, Thug said incredible. And uh, it's a lot of great comments. Um, Christine said anyone who stepped up into an already made family is a special person. And, so, and then also it said uh, Lisa said, I believe it goes both ways in regards to all feelings. Men also want to feel secure in all the things women want and vice versa. So we appreciate everybody leave those comments. Yes. I just want to share those comments with y'all as well because people are supporting y'all here on, the, on this tonight's show. Awesome. I know um, Jay, go ahead and share the, the, the story about the young man that wanted to end his life. Yeah, we talked true. about that last night on the, on the episode. We were talking about bullying. And mm-hmm. we had a lady that's, that brings awareness to bullying. And we had a lot of kids commit suicide due to uh, bullying and feel like they have to end their life. But I know, I don't know about the bullying system, but I know you had a situation where a young man wanted to take his life. Elaborate on it. Take us through that because people need to hear that. Yes. You don't know what's on a person's mind tonight. You don't know what's on a person's mind next door. Family, because we're not around people all the time, so you never know what a person is going through. They can be smiling at you right now, and after it's over with, they want to take their life. So elaborate right. on that, that experience. It's so true. I mean, look at look at Robin Robin Williams. I mean, yeah. comedian, and we you know, nobody knew that he was. It's crazy. So sad. So what else is really cool? Um, real quick is is Leslie on here. Leslie did know me when I was way younger. She knew me back when I was making fun of Christianity. I wanted nothing to do with God, and no wonder my life was going the way it was. I was like in rebellion to Him. So it's it's really cool to have somebody see me who I was then. To who I am now because you can't really see that most people just see me for now so mm-hmm. that's it's pretty cool so I'm glad she's on here it's good to see you on here Leslie so this I wrote this book it's called a reason to live so what I do with it um, is I pass it out anywhere I can right so in our neighborhood we have a bunch of book boxes it's like community book boxes so hmm. in the book boxes you take a book you leave a book it looks like a bird box it's like a little bird house it's just a little house hmm. and it's got a little clear window on it you take a book so we started going on like nightly walks, you know, just to get our steps in, you know, some healthy activity. And we started seeing these book boxes and, and kind of, kind of low areas and high areas. Right. Right. They're like, just kind of spread out. Mm-hmm. So we were like, okay, let's, let's put a book in them, you know, let's, let's see. put the books in there and see who gets it. And honestly, I didn't think anybody was going to take a book from the book box. Like right. I just thought it was a cool idea. Because they were all like dusty like little and, kid books yeah. or they were like novels or like books women would it was nothing like an autobiography or anything. Right. So she's like, no, you go ahead and put one in there. You know, it's going to be great. And that's, that's kind of how we work together again, too. We like push each other. Right. So we right. Help out. one has a little bit of doubt. The other one pushes the other one. So, <laughs> right. So I would go to these book boxes and I would put them in like this. So all the books are like this. So all you see is like a bunch of spine books. Spine. Okay. So I would start putting mine in there like this. So, right. so you were looking at it. You, you saw it when you were walking, right? So right. I'm on TikTok Live one morning, and uh, I get a text right after I get off. And I printed this text out because it really spoke to me about our story and, and yeah. sharing with people and helping people and, and getting the book out there more, which is for everybody else. I mean, you don't have to write a book, but just share with people, talk to people. You never mm-hmm. know what somebody's going through, right? Right. Because there's so much going on. So anyways, I get this text message. And this text message says, and it's a local area code, so I know it's someone from the book box, says, I'm on 1% battery, but as I was walking to say goodbye to the world, mm. so I could definitely use prayer. So I'm like, what? So I, I texted, I called it, I left a voicemail, and I, I never heard back, but hopefully he just, you know, hopefully they heard something. And read the book. That, that resonated with them, because mm-hmm. I, I haven't heard back from them. But what I think about is, what if I would have been like, yeah, what's my story going to do? Like, who am I? Who, who really wants to hear my story? And I didn't write the book and I, we didn't put the book in the book box and it wasn't there. And this person who was walking, ready to say goodbye to the world. And instead of seeing my mug looking at their face and it says a reason to live, instead of seeing this, they just saw a bunch of dusty old books in, a, in an old book box. And they looked over there and they were, who knows, you know, I'm ready to end it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. who knows that one little act of obedience could have possibly done. Wow. So, think about that with everybody else like if God's put something on your heart share it talk mm-hmm. to people I mean whatever you've been through that's the cool thing with God is because we've all got our own struggles and gone through whatever we've gone through but whatever we've gone through that's the very thing that God uses now all that wasted time and all that stuff that we've messed up and made mistakes and all that stuff dude he uses that mm-hmm. stuff for such glory now because there's so many people out there who need to hear it 
when yeah, I was yeah. when I was an addict, I uh, I I was in these rehab programs, and if anybody was ever a counselor that who was just book smart, right? Like he never went through addiction, he just got took his courses, and he just had some book smart knowledge. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear from. Him. Now I could hear it now because I can learn from everybody where I'm at mentally, but before right. I couldn't hear it. So there, how many people are in that position that cannot hear from anybody else except for you or me or somebody else out there? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just because so you've been through it. Yeah. To share mm -hmm. that struggle. Mm -hmm. That's very, very true. And what's uh, what else is cool about this book, Carmen, is we, we get a lot of women um, as I have a weight loss group and a lot of women in this weight loss group have these lost sons. It's a very common thread. There's like 35,000 women in this group I have on Facebook. And it's this common thing that I get in Messenger, which says, I saw your husband's book um, and I read a little bit about it or, or a lot of them ordered it. And they'll say like, can you write in one and send it to my son in jail? Most of them are in rehabs or jails or prisons. So yeah. we send a lot of books and Jay will write in them or I'll write in them. We'll both write in them. And they go into the pods and then we hear from, we talk to a lot of these guys because Jay will put his number in there. So they'll call, collect or whatever. And we hear that this book is going crazy through the pods. Like remember the one story of Jacqueline's son who said that he didn't want to read it. So he handed it off. He was an atheist. He handed it off. Right. And so all of a sudden one day he wanted it back. He just felt like he wanted it back. And he told Jonathan, he's like, I found it. It was like through this hallway down this, you know, different pod. And he came back, it came back, it was loaded with tear stains like the whole book had all these like smot and tear stains right mm -hmm. he said to jay he and he said i think he even said like he wasn't quite like saved yet or okay. but he, that he was reading it and it just he 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 said it, it impacted him enough for him to tell or told him in a, in a message i think in yeah, an email yeah. mm -hmm. he wrote it out but this book had tear stains on it and it was all stained because everybody was crying of the book yeah. and so we like that just like we are so happy and ecstatic about that so if we ever hear that somebody's child needs a book we order them a lot from amazon we get big boxes of them okay send them out and he has also made it really cheap on amazon available 5.99 paperback you know what i mean so a lot of people were telling him like make it like 15.99 or he's like no i want to make it so people can actually buy it you right. know, five ninety nine, pretty doable. And if somebody messages us and says they don't have it, we definitely will send them one. You know what I mean? So it's been such a tool for the gospel. And it's just Jay's basic story of how he got saved. Awesome. And I'm going to read a comment, too, from Lisa. She said, I have a son in prison. I should get him this book. He is fighting his own internal demons. Y'all want to elaborate on that? Yes, Lisa. Yeah, absolutely. And if you actually want to message us, we can actually we'll send it. Well, since he's in there, we won't be able to get a number in that one. I know Lisa Kapler. It, it depends she's on where she's at. Customer. Okay, cool. We yeah. can get a number in. Some some of the some of the prisons or jails and stuff like that, some of them they have to come straight from Amazon. Oh, that's true. That's so it true, depends yeah. which one it is, but we can try to get one with a number in it to see if he would also want to respond. But I would definitely love to get one in there for yeah. him, no matter what, with a number or without a number. Um, but absolutely. And that's one of the the examples. I didn't know my um my friend Lisa, her son was, but that's one of the women that I met in my in my weight loss group that is my customer that she just reached out that's just another person that's that common thread that all these women have and it's funny when they all give their little testimonies in my group they'll always will do the me too thing like whether they're they've gained weight because of um, a divorce or because their child's on drugs or because you know there's always these crises that cause weight gain and so it's just been this cool thing to see how god even works with all that you know healing all these different women because they can say me too. When you can relate to somebody, and there's such power in that, right? Then the related. It, is. it really. Is. That's why I love ministry. That's why I love what I do. It's so much fun. It, it is, and everybody want real stuff. You may think about the scripture and James. Take a picture of parts one to another. Then pray that you may be healed. So right. when they, God does the healing, so it's not wrong. When you confess our parts one to another. God wants us to be healed, and people don't understand. People need to understand that that God wants us to be healed, right? From our what if we you know from our addictions, our flaws, whatever you deal with, and don't have to point the finger at anybody because somebody's always dealing with something, some form of fashion, right. and just to hear that love and knowing that 
I don't look down on you because you don't look like me or you don't sound like me or you don't walk like me or you don't live where I live, but still treat people with the utmost respect. And that's something that we don't really do much nowadays. People are so cold hearted that they just look down on people, mistreat people, don't care at all. And we talked about this last night on the show too, how you see people on on Facebook live screaming. I think a while back, someone took their own life live Mm. streaming. You see people getting attacked on the streets and people just record it and Mm. put it on all these social media platforms. The video go viral. What what happened to just helping people out? What happened to all that? Mm Right. Yeah, it is. It is a. It is a crazy uh, thing that's going on. The lawlessness and the 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 just the 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 mean spirit that's on you know the internet on social media, and that's why it's so important for you, for me, for Jay to be pu- professing and pushing love and kindness. You know, because like with the bullying thing you were talking about, Furman, I get a lot of like women bullying me. It's mainly older women. It's so strange. Really? Oh yeah. And I'll say just today we were reading some horrible things and just, and I'll say to them, I'm so glad that I'm secure enough in myself and in my God and in my marriage, whether it be a comment about him or, you know, you're still fat, you're still old, you're still ugly, blah, blah. And and I'll say like, that's not going to make me go drink or drug or take my life, but it might make somebody. So you stop it. Like I'll say like, like stop. So I try to respond in love as best I can, Mm. but sometimes I have to pull away from it because it is really, really bad some days. You know, think about it. When I said like the 18 million views, 5,000 comments, thousands of people saying mean things, right? Right. And so it can get to you. It'll get me a little bit upset. It would never make me go kill myself or make me go get high, but it might do that to certain people that aren't strong. And it is really a big problem on social media. It really, it really does need to, to be addressed. And it might, Jesus said, the end of the world is going to be crazy, right? So, right. I mean, we can't be too shocked at the things that are going on. Right, because- that's true. Right. And it's here. And I know, um, Kim, you had an amazing weight loss journey. Yes. Um, the before and after pictures are crazy. You got a lot of love uh, <laughs> behind your, your journey. Uh, take us through that journey of, Okay. Where you was to where you are today, because you don't look your age at all. You really don't. <laughs> well, that is part. That, I mean, there's so many reasons for that. God is the main reason. You know, when you drink of the living water, you you, you show it shows, right? Mm-hmm. We do have really good supplements that I found, and then I eat clean. I drink a ton of water. I don't drink any soda or um, I don't eat any processed sugar. So I'm putting everything good into my body. But two years ago, whenever I had gained all that weight, and I think a lot of it was, that's when COVID was coming, you know what I mean? And it was so easy to eat our feelings and fear and all this crazy stuff was going on. We were like shut off from the world. And um, I am like the type like where I was an addict, you know, drug addict. And so I almost like it misplaced, not misplaced, replaced one thing for the other. So drugs and alcohol left and food came in. Food kind of comforted me and so with, when all that stuff was happening, I just ate and he's so loving. Like he almost like, it was almost bad to a point because he didn't care how fat I got. He would just love me no matter what. Right. And so like he'll <laughs> see pictures of me and he'll be like, I don't remember you like that. And I really think God had these rose colored glasses on him where he never saw that. And it, Cause mm. he'll look at pictures and go, I, I don't remember that. I don't. Yeah, I legit don't remember. I'll see some of these pictures. I'm like, wow, I don't I really don't remember like that. I don't remember you looking like that. But he just saw me through like the eyes of God. He had to have because I would be I would hate the way I looked and felt. And I was more more than looking. It was the way I felt, you right. know, I was had high blood pressure. My cholesterol was high. My brother had died of a massive heart attack at 39. So the doctors were worried about my heart. I wasn't eating right. And I would say to him, like, how can you even look at me? And he'd say, you're gorgeous and I'd be like I'm not you know but it's funny when he looks at pictures he's like I don't remember that but anyway I knew my doctor had said to me and I was in full-blown menopause which that's a whole another like story and he it's another thing he didn't like I was moody and you know he just was so loving all the time I don't even know how he stood me but anyway it's the Jesus factor I guess right guys but I went to my doctor and he motivated me because he was like you you're obese he used the o word which was bad no woman wants that. And whenever he said that to me, I remember thinking like it aggravated me and upset me, but at the same time, it motivated me. Like it, it was a really dual edged sword. 
where I was mad at him for saying that. And then I was like, oh, I'm not going to be, you know what I mean? And then I told him I was going to lose weight. And he said something really like it stuck with me. He was like, good luck with that. But most women at your age in menopause have a very hard time losing weight. So I want you to lose weight. He wanted me to, but he's like, good luck with that, basically. Well, that, I remember sitting in my car and I prayed and I was like, God, I don't want to like die like my brother. I want to give Jay a better life. I was having my first grandbaby. I wanted to be a healthy grandma. There's all these why, we call them the why factors, you know, all these right. whys. <laughs> and um, I had started on one program that I had lost a bunch of weight on, super expensive, very calorie restrictive. And I, I was miserable because I was hungry all the time, right? And then um, a friend of ours who's on here right now, his name's Tug and my friend Kathy and Dean, they were with another company and they reached out to me and, or I saw them, I saw them because they're bodybuilders. And I was like, now that's what I want, right? Okay, I, yeah. I knew that's what I wanted. I was like, now that's what I want and reached out to them. And they got me on, it's called the lean body system. It was on a different program, way cheaper, <laughs> way more calories I could eat. I wasn't hungry all the time. And that started, that started the process of me losing weight in a healthy way. Mm. Um, it's infused with collagen. So like it made my skin better and all that stuff. And then me and Jay realized that women started coming to me and men and saying, can you help me? Well, whenever we realized that we could actually help people get healthy and uh, make money doing it, we just like, oh, you see, we dove feet first, head first, whatever in. And it's, God has like exploded this thing on us where we're helping people all over the world. We have customers in New Zealand, Australia, Canada. Okay all over Europe, um, Aust Aust say Australia, yeah, um, all over the place in the Czech, 29 public, countries, 29 countries. Wow, and then congratulations we, on that. yeah, we didn't even plan on like building a team to do it too. We just thought we'd like sell the lean body system and help and coach. Mm. And then people started asking us like, Hey, Hey, I want to do what you guys too, do too. And Jay figured out, we didn't even know this, that he was really good at that. Side. He was really good at helping people build. And so now we have this like, record breaking month and you don't even know this but we were talked about on the um on the on our company call today that we were number six in the whole company which is like crazy congratulations thousands and thousands of people but we all give it all the glory to god because there's no way this would, would even happen if he didn't give us the wisdom and the revelation on how to do what we do because we have no experience going into this sermon like we hmm. never worked for a network marketing company right we never taught people how to lose weight God just like infused us with like wisdom and knowledge. And people say to us all the time, like, how are you guys doing this? And we're just like, Jesus. <laughs> That's it. Just doing it. And I know, Jay, you made a transition some years back where you was working full time and you let the job. I know you did a journey on that on Facebook. Yeah. How did that all come about as well from transition from leaving the job to jump into entrepreneurship? How did you and Kim have talked about that? How did y'all? strategize with that slaying that to the list of audience where people want to make their transition from right. nine to five to entrepreneurship right well so I, if, at first with this company like i wasn't against it but i wasn't for it i didn't really think it could do much of anything and thankfully she saw something in the future of what it could do because she pushed right she wanted to get this thing going so the first two months i was just kind of like eh, okay will you come home and have to work yeah, yeah and i would come home and i would help and and i was tired i was just tired man i just wasn't all the way in it but after the, you know in the second month area like i started seeing the money that we were pulling in and we just started looking at it we're like the money that we're making and the amount of time that we could be putting into this instead of me going to my hourly rate we could probably really do this thing and we just kind of took the leap of faith because we were making we were making a little bit more than I was making a month at that two month mark already, but we just knew that we could really push this thing. We so I mean, it, it was a little bit of a faith jump, but we were already making more than what I was making. So even if it, you know, if it broke even right there, it'd still be an even trade, but we just, it just skyrocketed and we just put all our time into it. But I think it really came from. Piece her, of from God. Too. It was, it was definitely from God, but her pushing and then coming home, at night and doing what I could before, because we did kind of get it established, even though I wasn't for it. I, I, I was still, still doing, helping. I was still helping and doing stuff. Yeah. So we kind of got established to the ball was rolling. And then I took that dive into it. So we didn't just like 
I quit my job. We started day one, and then we just like no. hoped for the best. Like we started the ball Ooh, rolling. We, we had the numbers. We sat down and we said, "Yeah, this is what we need to make for you to feel comfortable to put your two weeks notice in." And then once we hit that number, and he put his two weeks notice in, and he wrote his whole two weeks out because a lot of people yeah. just like quit their jobs and. You know, like he did it very respectful of the company, you know what I mean? And gave them two weeks. And then you saw that Furman where he did the live where he was on his last day in the mm -hmm. in the warehouse and everything. But um, and then he he's I remember you saying to me, I get I make twenty two dollars an hour and I'm slaving for like a 20 some year old boss. He had like a young boss that was always barking at him and he didn't like that. You know what I mean? Because right. it was he begged for overtime. He was just treated poorly. He it, it was just a lot for him. He didn't like it, but we had health insurance and he had that secure $22 an hour. And sometimes we would see like we would make $22 in a minute and we would be like, this doesn't seem smart. You know what I mean? Right. So whenever we realized that at 22, we were just exchanging money for time. That's all it is, an hourly job. You're just exchanging money for time. Yeah. And so we, our mindset shifted to the entrepreneur way of thinking was, mm, this isn't smart. Right. And so we knew that he could go back if he wanted to, right? We quit the right way. Yeah. And um, we just, I think we made, we, I don't even know, three or four times in a couple months as much as he was making there. And then we had the naysayers too, Furman, yeah. right? Oh, there was definitely naysayers. And then we looked at like the whole big picture of the thing too, because it would have been one thing if it was just, just weight loss stuff, right? But it's a consumable product that people need to reorder. They want to reorder. It's in demand. And there's something for pretty much everybody because it's clean label health products across the board, right? I mean, mm -hmm. household products, pretty much whatever you need, you can get. So there's a market for everybody. You know what I mean? And it then it goes hand no in brainer. hand with our life already because- healthy spirit right like right. we want to be healthy with god healthy with our relationship with him you, if your body's not healthy then you're going to be lagging in other areas so it all just came full spectrum it was like let's just smash let's this just thing. smash it you know it. So it's, just, it's just all connected yeah but it was Let's little see. steps of taking forward and then eventually it just it rolled into yeah. this so I remember your one friend telling this one friend said to him or let's be a family member you're going to let go of your health insurance and the funny thing about that was like we were barely using the health insurance. I was using it occasionally for my doctor or whatever, but he never did. He was in really good health. So basically we're going to work for the man for $22 an hour in case something happens one day. And we and, didn't, we don't have kids. So right? it's not like you're doing the kids. Right. Yeah. If we had kids, it might've been a little bit different yes. story at first, but we don't have kids. It's just yeah. us. So. And when we do go to the doctor, we have enough cash to pay out of pocket. Right. right. So, right. you know, it's just the mentality has to shift. The mindset has to shift. Right. And it really do. And I'm glad we're talking about, I want to talk about when it shifted the support system. Yes. You know, that's very important too when it comes to a marriage, supporting each other's dreams, supporting each other's goals, um, not to talk your partner out of their dreams, but to encourage them along the way. And especially for the men, you know, we know, I know the men, the boss of the men are the providers. And we know that the wives have these dreams. They want to have these goals. They want to reach. I know it takes a real man tell his wife to say, hey, babe, I got this. Pursue your goal, pursue your dream. I'll make sure everything's taken care of. We good. Some mm -hmm. guys don't think like that. They right. just think, well, the woman, she got it. We got bills and this and that. Right. What do y'all say about that new age mentality? Yeah. And, we, and these people be believers, but they yeah. got that new age mentality. What do y'all say about that? Because I do believe that, hey, if the wife want to do her, she want to, she has, she want to reach her goals. The hub and say, you know what? Hey, I got the bills. I take care of all the stuff. What y'all say about that? I think since we were, we've always been good with communication with each other yep, and pretty much together. in sync together. It's just like, even like, for example, when I wasn't all on board with this at first, I still wanted to help. You know what yeah. I mean? So I wanted to support it until you I saw it was important to me. Yeah. Until I could, I saw that it was something to take on to another level. But I think that communication factor is so key because if you, are really talking, you're really sharing what you want to do with each other. You were just there for each other with everything. It just makes sense to just do it, right? And things seem so effortless because of the communication factor, where if there's a lot of lacking communication, where it's just kind of like, I'm just going to do my thing. I want to do this. I'm going to go off. And then there's, you know, you do your thing. I do my thing. I could see maybe it would be a little bit more of like, eh, there's being some friction in it. But since our communication is so good, everything is really without, you know, it's just with ease. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So there is a lot of things are, you know, different now too, right? Because there's this shift of everything going 
digital, everything going online. Like yeah. Uber, Uber doesn't own a bunch of cars. They just found people that wanted to monetize theirs. You know, right. they didn't buy a bunch of houses. They find people that want to monetize their second home. So this whole social media internet transition is just like such a a huge transition. I mean, the entire world is going in a shift, whether you like internet or know, not <laughs> or not. It's it's just going that direction. So everybody look, has a, a Facebook account, or not everybody, but mostly. So we're just teaching people how to utilize that, monetize it. Right. And it's just such a no brainer when we realized it, you know. But we both were pretty pretty much at the beginning I was more so and like even with the videos because I knew he he wasn't with the video thing at first. At I, I don't all. want to do a little like you know no, dance. He didn't do it, but, <laughs> but I saw it. I had the vision for it and I would say, babe, listen, they like me, they do, but they would like us better. Like two of us together, our story together. And so yeah. he just started to like slowly integrate and have an open mind and Dude, whenever we do videos together, those are the ones that are explosive. Those are the ones that people just like, I love your story. Tell us more about your story. <laughs> and so like he came on board because he realized it was important to me. And then he saw the impact it was having on people. Right. And really the big picture is, yeah, the entrepreneur, the money is all great. But the biggest picture is who are we reaching? Who are we able to say this is all possible for? It's because of what God and Jesus did for us. That's the right. huge thing right? But how we get there, God's using all these different ways. And he wants us to be blessed financially. Right. He, he wants us to be. We're able to, we both found our role in this so easily that it just kind of, I don't know, it just, it just was just such ease. Like if she wasn't doing what she's doing on the social media, sharing her story, you know, doing the whole weight loss journey and just really fighting through that, there would probably be nothing for me to be strategizing or looking at on the business aspect at all. So it's like, she'll say sometimes like, without you, I don't know if I could do this. And then I'm the same way. I'm like, well, without you, there'd be nothing for me to do. So it's like, <laughs> we just, we just kind of operate together in this thing. So it's, that's another thing. We never really had much friction of like one person running the show. We both do and, our own thing. Right. So it's there, kinda... there'll be hours sometimes during the day, Furman, where we don't talk. We'll be sitting right next to each other mm -hmm. on his phone and I'm on mine and I'll, occasionally go what are you working on babe and he'll say i'm talking to so and so and he's what are you working on I'm like oh i'm doing this or i'll go to the ring light make a video while he's on the phone or like we just it's a very smooth operating machine awesome and you know I, I love that i love that that the the energy i love the uh the collab that got going on that's very special that that, that flow that uniqueness i love that if people need to hear that tonight that it can work. Marriage can work. You got to put in the work to make it work. Yep. And y'all sure still keep it going strong. So what is next for y'all? I know you do business, ministry, books. What else is on the agenda for the fam? I mean, it's it's pretty much all three of those things just exploding because we're just we're just still, I mean, getting this all settled in. I mean, the, the business side of it's only been a year and a half, so we're still really babying this. So we got big dreams with that because we want to do a lot of things, right? Like we want to, we want to help people get into rehab programs and get set free from stuff. We want to help. We want to do a dog rescue. We just want to be able to make a big impact while we're here. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We need, we need finances to do that. Yeah. I remember like we recently had this like little hate comment that said, it's so sad to watch what's happened to you guys. You've become so money motivated. And at mm. first it really got to me, but then I, I, I just was like, okay, listen, we're not money motivated. We are dream motivated. Our dreams take money, period. <laughs> it you does. Know, we are motivated by our dreams. What's our dream? We want to help people. We want to go to the gas station and fill tanks up. We've been doing that. It's so amazing, right? Like just to be able to go and be like, hey, we want to fill your tank up. Um, come on, baby. Give back. Little. Yeah, you want to give back and. Yeah, and we hey. uh, we have these big dreams. We want to have a <laughs> big a property. We want to have horse rescue. We want to help. You know, like we always were kind of givers. And we always wanted to be a radical giver, but in order to be a radical giver, you have to have radical right. money, right. right? And we never did. We would be able to give like a little bit, that's all we had. And so I think God has watched us for the last 12 years and said, I think that they are good with big blessings. I think they're gonna give things away. And we get slack from people for giving stuff away so much too. They're just like, what are you doing? And we're just like, we, we want it. We love helping and blessing people and just, seeing things like get Jesus get crazy praise, you know, because we'll always say like, that's from God. You know what I mean? Like people, right. 
And either why do pe people so caught up in your lives that they're not caught up in their oh, own God. lives? Yeah. You know, if people learn how to stay in their own lane, they could be a whole lot better. They could be far off. But I always want to spectate on what y'all got going on. I wouldn't do that if I was you, but they're not you. Right. I know what God put in your heart to do. And y'all just going forward and y'all moving with it. And y'all just having fun with it. And I love that and I respect that about y'all, what y'all do together as a team. And that's very, very beautiful. Thank you, Norman. I give y'all roses. <laughs> 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 I'm ready to come in too from Sally. Sally, take Kim and Jay. Very special and inspiring. Oh, thank that's you, Sally. Sally. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. That is awesome. And that's 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 the goal right there. Hearing hearing that is like the aim. So like goals going forward, it's it's increasing the amount of people that we can help spiritually and physically. Yeah. The more people you can help, the more that they can help. It's like a ripple effect. So it just becomes this huge vision of like how many people can we literally help? And it becomes like a rush. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen like the people on TikTok, Herman, or the people watching? Have you ever seen the ones that, okay, you go feed somebody, that's great. Or you go fill up a tank, that's great. But I, we see ones where they change lives. Like they'll get a homeless guy off the street and they'll say, what's your dream? I saw this one that impacted me. And he said, I, I want to, I was a chef in my back, you know, in my day, I was homeless because of these different tragic things that happened to me. And this guy, this, uh, he's an entrepreneur millionaire, took him and he bought him a food truck because he was a chef, bought him his own food truck. He gave him a, a makeover, bought him a whole wardrobe. And they sent, they put it out on TikTok that they were going to open this food truck. So the cords of people came that day, lined up and got food plates from him. And he was all happy and he's making tacos and all this stuff. And then um, at the very end, it, he was like, thank you for changing my life. I think he made like $50,000 that day. Well, the guy wow. that was doing it said, here's his Venmo. We want to get him into his own house. And blah, blah, blah. They changed his whole life. Like mm. they just didn't give him a plate of food, which it's not bad to do that, right? Right. You do right. It but if your vision is bigger, God will meet you where your vision is. That's so true. that's where our vision is. Like we're going to do like, big things for people. We're going to like, I'm telling you, God, God is making a way for us to be able to do those type of things. Oh yeah, most definitely. And he all worked here. Then I remember we had the rep, we had rep to see now on the podcast and he was talking about this. He was talking about how God already had everything already worked out. We just sitting there worrying, but God already got that thing worked out. We just have to believe and trust in him. But he already got it mapped out already. It's all about our faith and belief in him that he's going to make a way, walk by faith, not by sight. And Christina said, uh, love y'all, love y'all and the vision. The love y'all vision. I love so you too, a, Christina. I absolutely. think that's Christina on our team. What's her last name? Uh, oh, this, uh, Steve, 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 uh, Sturgis. Yeah, Steger, yeah. She's, she's actually okay. one of our people on our team that's doing amazing. So awesome. She has awesome. an amazing weight loss story too. Yep. Awesome stuff. So y'all have a lot of stuff going on. Y'all got a lot of y'all play. Y'all being productive. I don't say busy, but productive. So, productive. Uh, so how can people get in contact with y'all? How can they follow y'all social media platforms? How can they get the book? How they can get the weight loss stuff? So let it rip. Cool. Okay. So we actually have a really easy way to get a hold of us on the on the quick for everybody that wants to. So on like our Facebook, which you should see on here. Um, you go to our Facebook. We have a bio. So in the bio, we actually have a link tree that has, you know, multiple things in there. You can see some of the products, videos about the products, the book, um, but join most importantly, team. yeah, you can also join us. You can follow us on those things. Text us. We have a text number that you can reach out. Right. So we're pretty reachable to yeah. people. So get or a message of, us or you can message us. <laughs> message us, send us the number. Um, you catch that link in the bio and you can get a hold of us. Any of those. And that ways. says the link is hopefealer.me. Yeah. If you see that hopefealer.me, you just click on that and it, it opens up to all of the ways to contact us. Yep. His book, his Amazon um, book links in there and yep. all that stuff. Yep. My site, I think it's called uh, beardedbeliever.com. Yeah, online, it's his bearded so believer. Just, yeah. Yep. Either way. And join, if you're on TikTok, his um, screen name on TikTok is Bearded Believer. Every day at 9 a.m. Eastern yep. from 11, he does a really cool Bible study, prayer open discussion for two hours every day yeah, it's except for be, sunday it's supposed to be nine to ten but, but it's it hard to get 11. off so yeah it usually yeah. goes to about 11 but it's monday through friday and yeah it's it's every day we've been doing it for probably close to a year now yep man honestly i got a lot of great stuff and i thank y'all for taking y'all hanging out with me on tonight here on the podcast <laughs> love you Furman. we're so proud of you 
So proud of you. I appreciate it. I love y'all too. And like I said, we're just having fun here. Talk about a lot of stuff. Talk about some interesting stuff here on the podcast. I know we, we still have like still got some time going on. People still in the comment section, of course. They loving it. They love the vibe and stuff. Oh, wow, and there I is just, a lot of comments. Yeah, and I'm gonna do some research too. I'm looking, I'm on my other laptop as well. And I know we're talking about marriage, of course. And I'm and it said, I look, I pulled this up. It said, what is the main purpose of marriage? And this is what it says. Marriage is the beginning, the beginning of the family and a lifelong commitment. It also provides an opportunity to grow in selfishness as you serve your wife and children. Marriage is more than a physical union, it's also a spiritual and emotional union. The union, the union mirrors the one between God and his church. What do y'all say about that when it says spiritual and an emotional union? I, I think that's the well, perfect explanation right away, but I think it's just, it shows how important first communication is between us because how, in prayer. yeah, and prayer, because how meshed together we are, you know, where the Bible says that you become one flesh. And so the logical mind, it's like, well, one plus one is two. It's not one. It's like, no, it's literally one. It's a spiritual thing. So when I hear that, I also think about everybody who's like out there thinking about like, who's their person, um, where, where should they, you know, settle down with what person, all that stuff and get that communication going out right away. Like, don't be scared to ask hard questions. Don't be scared to feel uncomfortable. Get it all out there and communicate because communication is the reason everything is the way it is. Or, or lack of. Yeah, or lack of. So communication between me and her, communication between us and God, it's, it's what makes everything go. You know, there's a piece that passes understanding. And I, I love that explanation because a lot of times we go through life and sometimes stuff stuff sucks. Sometimes we go through struggles. Sometimes life happens and sometimes we don't know what's going on. But in the midst of all of it, there's still a peace within that you just know that even through these hard times, it's going to work out. And then you see it work out later and you're like, oh, wow, I see the purpose or I see what can happen out of this now. So I just think about communication and how important it is to take that seriously, really. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. And I'm looking to read really it too. Oh, uh, what God says about marriage. He said marriage is ordained of God. God instituted the husband and wife relationship as an equal partnership with Adam and Eve, see Genesis 2, 24. Marriage is central to God's plan for our happiness during this life and our eternal happiness in a life hereafter. What do y'all want to say about that? Well, it's, it's, it's definitely all about the life hereafter. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's where the vision comes in, right? The vision is what can we do together right now? To make to, an impact. To cross the line to the end, because the end is not the end. For us, right. the end is the beginning, and we can't wait to cross that line and, and just kind of walk in there like, you know, what what did we do with the time that we had? The dash. Did you ever hear that saying? I heard it before, the dash. That's a really good thing. What are you going to do with the dash between life, with the day you were born and the day you die, that dash on your tombstone? That's so, so imperative to look at that, you know? What's your dash going to say? That's right. it. That's oh. it. And I like what it says. It says, I ascended God's plan for our happiness. So God wants us to be happy. And he, he wants, wants us to be, to be happy. happy. He, he does. Be, that's yeah. it. And I want the key word, God's plan for our happiness. Not man, but God's plan for our happiness. Yep. Right. Yep. Absolutely. I think that yeah. should in there too, real quick, is you can be proud of yourself. You can be proud of what you do. There's a big difference of being prideful and being proud. And right. I think it's important that we we, we humbly hold our head up because I think sometimes we think that we need to be like, be broke and just get by and be super humble all the time. And it's like, no, the meek will inherit the earth. And what is the meek? Strength under control, right? Mm -hmm. So it's okay to be proud of yourself and proud of what you do. Yeah. It's, it's different than prideful. So. And that's what, another what thing you? I say to Jay every day, maybe 10 times a day. Sometimes I'll go, I'm so proud of you. And he'll go <laughs> for what? I'm like, I'm just so proud of you. Like if I hear him on a call or, I hear him talking to one of our people and helping them. He'll get, he'll, you know, get off and I'll go, hey, I was listening to you and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> and that's like something that we have to completely encourage each other daily. And he does the same thing to me, you know? So it's, it's very important, the edification of each other in marriage to tell each other, you're beautiful, you're handsome. I love you. I'm proud of you. The words that we speak over each other are so, so, so important. Oh, that's very important. I'm looking at some too. Uh, three gifts of marriage, uh, companionship, passion, and purpose. This is from July 17th, 2015. What did I say about that? 
Well, it is. It definitely shows our purpose because purpose is a weird thing. Sometimes you can be like, well, what is what is my purpose? What is my purpose? Like, what does that mean? And when you are paired up with, you know, you and God or you, God and your spouse and you guys get on the right track and you're moving forward, your purpose is something that continually is revealed to you each and every day. And Mm -hmm. it's not a specific thing. It's a it's an in process walking through thing like it's just us existing and making an impact. Right. And there's some specifics along the way, but for the most part, everyone here has a purpose and a reason to live. And there's another, there's part, another book part of that book um, right there. Let me, let me interject about that. So if you're, let's take the opposite. Let's say you're with somebody you're not supposed to be yoked up with. Your purpose will just be so dragged down and bogged down because like, I'll give you an example. I knew a guy that was a worship leader. Okay. Amazing worship leader. He got yoked up in marriage with this girl that we knew that he was not supposed to be with. She was not ministry minded at all, right? And every time he would go to minister, she was nagging him and mad and wouldn't go with him and stomped her feet and he'd come home from the ministry event. She'd be in bed, already tucked in bed and not, you know, and they they ended up divorced. And Mm. one thing he said was, I didn't ask God if that was who I was supposed to be with. Then he ended up finding somebody who was played the guitar and worship and they are all over like the place ministering and because their purposes were aligned. So if you get with somebody and their, your purposes are like this, your marriage is going to suffer and it's going to just, it's going to be such a burden. You know, that was so hard for him to like try to figure out like, sh- do I make her happy? But he knew he was called to be a worshiper. Right. Remember he'd cancel some of his stuff. He wouldn't do all of his things and then he'd be great. Yeah. It was just, it was really sad. So it's really good and important to be with somebody that God intends you to be, because then your purpose is, your purpose can go like this. Yeah. And I, and I agree with you, Kim, what you're saying. I know as guys, guys go off the outer appearance of the woman, or how good she look, how her body is, and not getting That's to know was. the woman. And y'all brought up some interesting points about communication. Some guys don't think, this preacher told me this story years ago. He was sharing the story with everybody. He was counseling this, this they finna get married. So the preacher was getting this guy to see the whole big picture. Okay, you finna get a step off into this marriage. You know, she has this stuff going on in her life. She has all this stuff. Are you willing to handle that? The guy responsible was, you see how fine she is. Oh, yeah. So he kept seeing it. So he said it again. Okay, she has all this stuff going on in her life. Are you willing to handle it? You see how fine she is. That was the response. Got what in a filing for divorce. But he, that could have been avoided if he would have sat down and considered yeah. the call. Like Jesus said, have you sit down and considered the call? That's wisdom. Right. So people so want to jump into stuff, but they didn't have to have they really sit down and consider the call before they make that could make that union with that person. Or they just go along with their emotions, their feelings, right. how fine you're the flesh. You know, people love that. They run out with that scripture. It best to marry than to burn. And, right. You know, and people run with that. And it's like, wow. <laughs> they do. We saw a lot of that yeah. in the past. People can definitely twist scripture in order to fit their needs. That's why it's so important for you individually to pray. have a relationship and pray with God. Because you can read something and take it however you want it to. And it be the wrong way. So, yeah. We've seen a lot of people get married very quickly. Like, I think the record was like 16 days. Yeah. We saw somebody, they used that scripture. Yep. Well, God says better, you know, to marry. And I'm like, so oh, Lordy. But, <laughs> but are they compatible? That's the thing. Like, y'all, when y'all got together, y'all talked about a lot of stuff. Like, are we compatible? Are we just doing this because we're in our flesh? Right. right. Yeah. We, we had a lot of conversations. And one of the things, and I tell people this a lot, one of the things we fell in love in church, right? I mm-hmm. saw where he was with God and Jesus and the Bible and he, his Bible was all written in and highlighted. And I was like, Oh, I love that. <laughs> and the, and that one of the things too, this is funny. I was, we, I was talking to him about Christian music. Cause a lot of people, a lot of men or a lot of everybody don't, they don't know Christian artists. You know, yeah. we don't only listen to Christian music. We listen to a lot of like positive other stuff, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I remember I said to him, what's your favorite Christian song? It was, it was a test, right? <laughs> I said, it was at the beginning. I was like, what's your favorite Christian song? And he was like, I think it's set me, set me free by casting crowns. Herman, I almost 
all over dead because that is my favorite song and i was just like you know because it's a very not known song it's not like a popular song i was like you know the song set me free by casting crowns he goes yeah i love that song that was it then we started like bouncing music off each other we would do this like when we have like time alone we he'd, he'd let me hear a song and i'd let him hear a song and we'd listen to music and like we have like a playlist that we fell in love to and we'll listen to it sometimes but music is a very powerful thing you know but we always like used it in a very powerful way but like i knew he was the real deal when he knew like a very off the beaten track christian song i was like <laughs> and he's so young too and he knows casting crowns it was just crazy awesome and romance let's talk about romance you know people think just because you say you're not supposed to be romantic they oh. get scared to talk about this stuff it's like in church, they believe it. They don't talk about certain. If you read Songs of Solomon, that's oh. what he talked about. He talked about romancing his wife and how his wife's body was to him. Mm -hmm. So, how do y'all keep the romance going? Do y'all have date nights? I know a lot of times you're working, but do y'all have that that quality time with each other? So, what's yeah, the we don't really have date night because we're 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 grinding for a vision or for a goal right now. And okay, so I respect that. It's what's different. Up? It'd be different if like I wanted that, then he would do that, or if he wanted, we would do it. But we're both like we're not we just don't want to do that occasionally we might like take a couple hours off and like we'll play like the the quest you know the um what's the, it called yeah the the, the virtual reality virtual reality game. game we'll put we got two headsets okay and we'll go like we can go anywhere in that so we'll go like to egypt or we'll go like we'll, we'll take dates in that like we'll go play we played miniature <laughs> golf the other day on the ocean okay. on that so like we'll do that but like we come right back to work because we have a very set goal that we want to mm. hit. And so, but, but here's the cool thing though, Vermin, and a very important thing. We both feel that way. Awesome. If one of us didn't feel that way, we would bend for that. But, but we say this a lot. We'll say, isn't it cool that we both like grinding like this? Because if one of us didn't, it would be a problem. Like we'd have, one of us would have to adjust. Right. Right. So we just <laughs> like, but one thing that he does to keep like romance and he's always telling me, all the time how beautiful i am and how you know like gorgeous i am if i come down the steps and i have been getting ready you know um and i don't get ready every day i don't do my hair and makeup every day but i do try often to look very nice for him even though we stay at home and work but i'll come i'll put a cute outfit on do my hair nice and i'll come down the steps and he immediately it's so cute he'll stop like dead he'll go <laughs> oh my gosh you are gorgeous and like it's so cute because women love that like we yeah love to hear like that he noticed that i was looking beautiful for him because it's not for anybody else we don't right. know anybody. it's just like in the house but even like if i'm not all done he'll still say like i know you don't have any makeup on but you're so cute you're so cute and so we do that continually and keep it very like we're attracted to each other we love each other we, we appreciate each other you know and even like on the health side he's very supportive of me he used to eat a lot of like really bad junk food, like and it not that it would it would cause me to stumble, but it wasn't great to open up the freezer and see all these different ice creams, right? Like I'd be like, oh, or he'd sit down at night and eat like out of a carton and I'd be like, hey, really? Well, just one day he just said, I'm not bringing that stuff in the house anymore. It's not necessary for me. It's not good for you. And I thought that was huge because I would have never asked him to do that. But he came to the terms. And so like, he's very supportive of me walking every night. I walk every night. He goes on walks with me. We awesome. make voices, you know, so it, that stuff is very, very important to us. Super like, stuff. Yeah. Super you gotta stuff. listen to that. The simple stuff, like folks that's listening, like the little simple stuff lasts long. But I love what y'all said. Y'all gotta, gotta grind it, y'all got a vision. So all the other stuff put on a hold. And y'all glad when you have two people that's willing to make this move, that makes the, the journey a whole lot smoother. Instead of oh, giving somebody who don't want, yeah, that is, that is a big struggle. And that's like, this thing about it sounds so stressful. <laughs> <laughs> and so I know we, I know we press for time and everything else. And I know it's going to be on the YouTube channel. It's going to be on, on Spotify and Anchor. What final remarks do y'all have for the listening audience watch this right now? And we live streaming on Facebook Live when they look at it on YouTube and when they listen to it on Spotify Anchor. Uh, final remarks. So I would say pay attention to the the details, the small things within within your marriage, because it's it's easy to like 
do something big and noticeable every once in a while, but to just be consistent with like the little things, all those little things really make those big things happen and then make it more meaningful. So I would just say, keep the communication is key. The communication between y'all, the communication between God. If you are that person who's looking for somebody else, you know, don't run with that better to get married than it is to burn with passion because you, you do something in the heat of the moment just because somebody looks good and, and you might have yourself a world of trouble later, mm-hmm. but keep close to God, keep close to him. He's going to give you exactly what you need, all your desires, everything you need. He's going to bring it to you in the right time. And if, and if it isn't there, that person ain't there yet, it's just because the right person ain't there yet. And if it's that wrong person, you're going to, it might sound good for the moment, but later on, you're going to find yourself like, what happened? Right. Well, yeah, your, your dreams are going to get different. Your, everything you've wanted to do is going to change. And you're going to be like trying to fight to survive instead of fight, you know, to thrive. Right. So Mm. goal is to thrive, not to just, you know, try to make things doable and just get by and tolerate each other, you know? Mm -hmm. So be patient and have communication with him and your spouse. If you're already married. Oh, I'll, I'll touch on last closing words. So he took it, the spiritual one, and I'm going to take it to the, to the, to what okay. we're, what we're doing in the world. So one of the main things in life that stresses marriage is finance, money, right? That's right. one of the main stresses because you can have a very happy marriage, but if you're very stressed, not real, not knowing how you're going to pay the electric bill or feed the kids or, you know, this bill is due and this bill, and then, you know, you start arguing and bickering. And it's just the state of the economy right now is so crazy. You know this, Vermin. Gas is yeah. great. I was ta- I was talking to somebody whose electric bill in Florida like quadrupled. They can't pay the electric bill. They're having to turn the air down. They're hot. The family's miserable. The husband comes home miserable. It's hot, you know. Mm. And so with like everything that we've learned in this last year is like there's so many ways, especially with the internet, to make money. Like find a way find a way like we did, or like, I don't know if you have something going on, but there's so many things with online, the way the social media is to, to just bring a little source of income in the side that would take that little pressure off and use your, instead of like the weekends sitting there watching Netflix and chill, use that little time you have from your job to work on your little side hustle, to find a stream of income that you can, you know, take some of the stress off of your marriage with money. And like, and, and I really want to say this, that there's people out there that are saying like, I need that. Please contact us. We would love to help you figure out how to take some stress off your marriage. With you money. got to. And, and, and it's not wrong with them because you say it's not wrong with having money. And also I know I'm, I'm doing it. I had a t-shirt store. So I really be back from all that as well with the t-shirts and stuff. And I'm very oh, excited yeah. about that. So that's going on. So, oh, oh cool. stars is another thing I'm getting into stars. With buns and stuff. Okay, I got in Nike. What about um, Bitcoin? Are you doing Bitcoin or anything? I, I haven't gotten into Bitcoin. I know people talk about it, but I encourage anybody. I know I did another life insurance policy. I did another R. I did an RIA account. So that oh, stuff wow. is important, especially for a man, because men with logic, we think long term, not short term. And I know what what y'all are doing. Y'all not thinking short term. Y'all thinking long term. I know they, I know you got grandchildren, and you want your grandchildren to benefit off the labor that y'all doing. I respect that a lot because we don't think generationally. They, Generation I, well. Right, because the late Dr. Great Dr. Monroe, Dr. Miles Monroe told us that we should think generationally. And we don't. And, and I don't want to say in our community when it comes to the church, they don't teach us how to think generationally. We just right. think about right now, but we're not thinking about our children. The Bible's a good man leaving hands for a church or children. So I'm going to ask you this, Kim and Jay. Are we getting to that point now that we're starting to think generationally now? Since it's yeah, we, we, we definitely have since we've started, you know, bringing income in like, like, like we've never experienced. We still live in the same house. We still live the same, drive the same car. Not that we will forever, but we didn't right. make any big changes. We're just okay. accumulating in, in the bank. We did what you did. We bought um, a couple life insurance policies, whole life. We're investing money in it. And it was so weird hiring an investor to like talk to us about money. Cause like, seriously, you guys, like you have to know our story. We were always very like, we paid our bills and no money. So for us to say like, this is what we have and we want to do, we want to make our money work. Right. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed we don't to be. You want to just sit. So yeah, we do want to, you know, our grandkids, my two granddaughters, we think about that. Like, I don't want them growing up having to worry about school or I'm trying to get enough money now to pay my daughter's school loans off. She put herself through school. She's a doctor, but she has okay. this 
enormous debt. So like we're trying to like figure out how to work on that and dig that thing out. But that those are the things that's so nice that when you do have access to different types of money that before, you know, we would see people struggling or my daughter struggling and we'd be like, we, we, you know, not that we were being mean, but we just didn't have it. Yeah. So right. now we are thinking about generational. I know there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about building up wealth for the generation and the next generation. And the next right. Gen- a good man even here for children, children. I remember reading that about before I met Jay and thinking that was so overwhelming to me. Like, how does that even happen? Like, that's a crazy scripture. It, it's happening. Right. It's happening for us. But it's just been a matter of like following the footsteps that God put out there for us. Right. A lot of times we could have went left or right lots of times, but we stayed, you know, here. And it's just a matter of like walking in his favor and his blessing. You know, it's just time. Hmm. time. It is. And the Bible yeah. often says that if you'll lean to many nations and won't have to borrow anything. Dang it, that's a lot. Lean to many nations. That's the word of God. And mm-hmm. I think, I know Deuteronomy 8 18 said that God gives the power to get wealth. That's another thing the church don't talk about either. They don't, a lot of stuff they don't really talk about. A lot of stuff you have to learn outside. Mm-hmm. Right. The organized religion, but I'm, right. I'm so it's God is awesome. We are in, we're in the same shoes as you. We are learning so many <laughs> things that we really weren't taught. You know, right. something comes from the Holy Spirit. Like we're just sometimes we'll be like, oh wow, like we never really were taught that, but here we are living. Right, it. and that's what people, and that's what people like. They like the real, and they they don't go and be a part of organized religion. They won't. What's different? The God that you serve. What's different about the God that you serve? That I want. You remember? Okay, look, look at uh, with Zach Heater. He was short in stature. He came. He had an encounter with Jesus, and he gave back stuff that he took from people. We don't know the conversation they had. The Bible never said it, but right. it was something that stuck with him, made him change his life. That's how it's supposed to be when people come in contact with us. That right. it, it just we don't know the conversation they had. The Bible never said it. Right. Yep. That's true. That's very very true. So it's like, wow. So y'all on the right path, y'all on the right journey. And if you're a believer, it's not wrong with having money, okay? Don't get scared of having money. You gotta have money. The Bible said a man for provide. How he supposed to provide, he not work. Paul mm-hmm. said, man don't work, don't eat. Right, right. Yeah. 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 Money's not the root of all evil, it's the overwhelming love of it, which yeah. is, this is money is neutral. Because love is I mean, money is neutral, like we always say. Yeah. Yeah, cool. so don't be, don't be, yeah, you know what, we talked about that today when I was working out with my personal trainer, also my coach, Shay, we talked about that today during the session, like, money is a tool, so don't be scared of it, <laughs> you know, don't, when you say that, when you say the love of money, that means you worship, that means you'll do anything for it, you'll kill for it, you'll steal for it, it's not wrong, don't do that, don't do that, that's, <laughs> but right. do, do right. things the right way, save your money, that's another thing, you gotta save is about save your money. Um, I always have something stored away because I, I that paycheck to paycheck live and I did that before. It's no fun. It's so not, right? not fun. So I, I agree with you. I got to have another um set of income coming in. Warren Buffett talks about that all the time. If everybody's not familiar with Warren Buffett, check out Warren Buffett. Um, Dave Rams, check him out. So it just because you're a believer, don't be closed minded. Go out in the world. It's different people. They bring great information, and that's another thing. People get so scared of. Jay and Kim of uh, getting information outside the world. They get so scared. Like, yeah, right. that's the devil. The devil might, and I, I don't say the devil. Everybody <laughs> said the devil is the devil that. He oh. don't have power. Paul said, don't give a place to him. That means you got power. So why are you giving place to the devil? So, yeah. Yep. I, I, we have that same thing where we don't over spiritualize things like that. Because, number one, what, what good does it do to an unbeliever when they hear you talk that way? You sign kooky, right? Just yeah. you, have a balanced view of things because not everything is, you know, if you come down with a cold, it's not because, you know, the devil made you sick. Like you probably came into contact with a bacteria. Right. Cold, you know, and so we just try to live very balanced and, and, you know, like just walk like a balanced person because sometimes you get too like you lean. You ever hear that saying, don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Yeah. Very, very like wise uh, statement. You have to like, you know, be balanced. Yeah, be balanced. And uh, and then I'm that, I remember, you know, Jesus did say that the children of the world will be more wider than the children of light. Mm. Like Jesus said that. And we look at look at the world. Right. They, they are wiser than the children of light. But the children of light, they do perilous stuff. They believe mm. all we do is pray. 
and don't do anything. Right. But the people in the world, what they do, they utilize their gifts. The Bible says, God gives gifts by repentance. They utilize their gifts, even though they may be using it for the wrong reason, but they're utilizing their gift and they're benefiting from it. So, yep, that's very true. Very, very true. That's another thing they don't ever talk about. Yeah, I don't want to never really talked about that. And see, a lot of stuff you have to talk about. Oh, like, no, Furman. <laughs> You're awesome, Furman. We have to do this again, Furman. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. I'll be glad to have y'all back on. I know y'all got some work to do, and I got to do some work to do after as okay. well. Also, so once again, plug in y'all information for those that just okay. jumping on in. Give a big shout out to everybody in the comment session. Uh, Christina said, "Y'all be best, and thank you." We Beautiful love testimony. You and educated in suit. God will place us in path of righteousness and true friends and, and family. Good night, y'all. That's from uh, Christina. Well, oh. y'all go ahead and plug in one more time what I got going on. Okay, I'm going to put my text number in the chat. All you have to do is text us and say what you um, are desiring if you want, you know, the book or if you want to talk to us about making some money or if you want to talk about weight loss or if you want to talk about Jesus, whatever it is. Um, we always have our text number and we're, we both work that number and um, we try to be available to everybody. Right. Absolutely. So yeah, we're easy to get a hold of. So just reach Very out. Easy. We'd love to talk about whatever it is. We can, we can talk about all kinds of things. Right. So health, wealth, spiritual. Let's, let's go, man. Yeah. Awesome. We love you, Vermin. Thank you for having us. It's such a blessing. We, we love Appreciate you so you, much. Yes. We'll talk soon. Okay. Most definitely. Man. Salute to y'all. Okay. God bless y'all. And I'll see y'all next time. Have okay. a great night, everybody. Enjoy your Wednesday night. Enjoy your loved ones. Work on your purpose. Work on your passion. All that other good stuff. And I want to say this too. Remember the graveyard. Everybody's in the head. One thing they come in the graveyard. They thought they always gonna have tomorrow. That's tomorrow right. Not promise. Live your life like it's your last. Live your life like it's a, like you're a rock star. Not in a careless way, <laughs> but in a respectable way. You and remember, love y'all. As that, love yourself too. Love yourself, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. Can't stress that enough. The Bible said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So love yourself, love your neighbor, but love yourself first. If you love yourself first, you'll love your neighbor a whole lot better. Right. Y'all have a great night. Ben Herman. Love you. Okay. Love y'all too. Bye. And I'll see you. Bye. And I'll see y'all next. I'll be back on here Saturday night on the podcast. We're going to be talking about um, relationships, dating, marriage. That's going to be Saturday night. And I'll be brief on that. So y'all have a great night. Peace, everybody. Okay. All right. Um, bye. Yeah. That was awesome.